Hi, Mike again. I wanted to today uh, go over my plan for you. You can see I haven't done anything yet. Um, I have started to order things. I'm very excited for those packages to start to arrive. Um, but I wanted to go through with you what my plan is so you can see how exactly I'm going to divide up this space. Uh, in my first video, I kind of told you the dimensions of the space. Not a super huge cargo van. Um, and I will... Uh, talk about in another video why I chose this van but today I wanted to go over exactly what my plan is where I'm going what I'm going to be doing so I'm gonna go through the layout for you talk about some of the construction um, plans that I have show you some of the drawings that I have done so you can see where this project is going to go so you have an idea of what I have in mind as we go along so let's get started all right, we will start at the beginning then. This is the subfloor. So um, I have another version of this drawing that has all of these specific measurements and everything for all of these little nooks. But the point is that this is three quarter inch plywood that is going to be cut out to fit around all of these specific nooks and crannies in the van. For instance, um, on the sides here, these are the wheel wells. Over here, this is where there is a little dip because there's doors on both sides of the van. It's kind of a little step in. And on the driver's side, so again, this is the front of the van, this is the back, so this is the driver's side. I'm going to extend the subfloor out over that. That's gonna give me a little ledge to install things like my battery, my inverter, and obviously I will show you all of those things in much more detail in a later electronics video. Um, but that's why it's shaped a little bit differently on this side. And then also one thing to note is this gap here is actually to scale. This is actually a channel. So I'm gonna have two separate pieces and I'm gonna leave a three quarter inch space between them. Um, so like I said, my electrical is going to be over here. I'm going to run an extension cord. It's actually going to be a power strip with the cable running through this channel under the bed, under the subfloor, under the kitchen counter, which I'll show you those in a minute, and the power strip will end up over here. So it just allows me to run that cable without having to run a cord around the exterior or over the top or some other mess. So that's the subfloor. This then is the primary design for the van. This light white area represents the whole border of the cargo area. This is the main bed area. There is a little notch here because that follows the shape of the van. There's a notch there in the van. Um, so bed slash couch over here. On this side, I have a kitchen cabinet and then I'm going to have a fold up desk. So I'll be able to sit on the couch here and work. Um, at this desk, which then will, will fold down and get out of my way um, to free up this aisle. Here I have a sink that will be sunken in. This is just a, a generic photo. I'll show you a little more detail later and then obviously in a later video when I construct the kitchen cabinet and do the plumbing, I will have videos for both of those things and you'll see the detail there. But the sink will be there. I was going to have an inset hot plate. I have decided now to give myself some more counter space and just put the hot plate there when I'm using it. I'm gonna have an inductive hot plate. Uh, I will put it there when I'm using it, store it away when I'm not. There will be storage under this cabinet where I can put that hot plate. Um, the storage will kind of be cut off by the desk when it's folded down, but it's primarily gonna be storage for my fresh and gray water tanks and then this hot plate. So there won't be a, a whole lot lost there. Again, I'll show you that uh, in more detail in future videos. And then this is the same area, just a different view. So this would be if you fold down the desk, then I will have a pull out bed. So there's gonna be an extension for this bed that pulls out, it'll all be level. It's gonna add an additional 15 and a half inches. So that gives me 44 and a half inches of total bed space, a little bit larger than a twin size. So maximizing that space, I'll still have a little room over here to put my feet down, to stand, whatever. Uh, and again, this countertop will be bare with the exception of the sink. So I'll be able to put, you know, my phone, my watch, things up there at night to charge and have access to them. So uh, that's what it's going to look like with the bed pulled out. These are the slats for the pullout. So this side here, this is what goes on the main permanent portion of the bed. And there'll be two of these, two of these, two of these. So there's two of everything you see pictured here. So um, it's gonna have slats across here, then you'll see this one fits in. So for instance, you see slat, gap, 
well, here we have gap and then slat. Um, so those two will fit together. These are the legs. So this is gonna be three quarter inch plywood, which will be attached to the front here. Um, so this is a top view, whereas this is a front view. Um, this will be attached to that. Actually, this edge here is the top of this. That's what this part is here. So um, that's what the it will rest on when I pull that out. And again, there'll be two of those. And then you'll see I have hinges. So it's going to be two separate halves. So I can o open either one. And uh, that will give me the ability to uh, access the storage underneath. As I'm recording this, I'm realizing that I'm going to need two sets of bed lifts, and I just ordered one yesterday. Um, so I'm going to need to order another one, but you'll you'll see this in a little bit later in this video as well, that this is a constantly evolving process. I do not have this down to a science yet. I'm hoping that I will by the end of this. Uh, I would actually really like to put out an ebook that completely outlines this process and gives you everything you need to do in case you want to do this. But first, I've got to iron it out as I go along. So I'm literally discovering things as I'm recording this. Um, so anyways, these will lift up to give you access to storage underneath. And then these are the cushions. Again, I have a cutout here to reflect the cutout there. This is a little bit more detailed version of um, that same drawing with some more measurements. Um, and like you can see, this is going to be a one by six, this portion here. Um, so the cushions will align here. Then these are the cushions that will go on the pullout. I might have a problem when I put them as the back, like when I have the pullout pushed in and they become your backrest. With this chunk here, I'll have to figure out how that all rests. But uh, that's the cushion design. This is what I'm gonna send to the cushion manufacturer. I did find a company that manufactures cushions and I will post the link to that um, in the description of this video. Um, they manufacture cushions. I'm hoping they can do, you know, this custom corner cut out for me in these custom sizes. They have it where you can just order without talking to anybody certain sizes. You can customize the measurements, but it doesn't go all the way up to 29 inches. So I need to get them to customize that for me and then also customize this uh, cut out here. But that's what the cushions will look like. And then I'll just, you know, I can send them this drawing. Um, to get a quote and hopefully have those cushions built for me. So this is the countertop. You can see an evolution between what I did here and my newest drawings. I actually just did these today. This is what the counter measurements will be. And you see it's 39 inches wide rather than 38 because I decided that on the main counter portion, which is this part here, I wanted to have a half inch lip on the sides. Um, that's what this dashed line represents. So this became 39 inches wide. This is the actual size for my sink. It is 11 and a half inches. Uh, the hole needs to be, which only leaves me a half inch clearance. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not, but I don't want to make the counter wider than I have to. Uh, I already made it a half inch wider. It was 12 inches. And then this bed section slash desk section was um, 16 inches rather than 15.5. So my bed just keeps getting smaller and smaller. And I'd rather not do that because I'm hoping to not die alone and to um, maybe someday have somebody to share this bed with. But anyways, um, I just don't want to make it smaller than I have to. And then this small hole is for the faucet. So this is a generic image that is in my design software, but I just have a stainless steel sink, which I will show you in another video. Um, and then I'm going to have a hand pump faucet. Obviously, I will outline both the installation of those, how that plumbing system works, how it ties into my fresh and gray water tanks. All of that will be outlined in uh, future videos. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what I'm doing. And then what I'm missing from the kitchen is a refrigerator. Now, in an earlier version of my design, the refrigerator actually sat under the bed and I was going to make the legs and the pullout accommodate it. You would slide out the refrigerator. I had sliders planned, but then I realized that I was not going to be able to sit up on the bed. I had to lower the height of the bed to 12 inches to be able to sit up on the bed, which was necessary, especially since I'm going to be working at the desk. I needed to be able to sit up. So the refrigerator no longer fits under the bed. So I had to look at uh, Domatix. Dometics, Domatics? I don't know. I don't know. This company here, I had to look at 
uh, their thinnest models. Unfortunately, they do have two models of their refrigerators that are specifically designed as thin. Um, one is, I believe, 11 liters, and this one is 23 liters. It's only about 11 inches wide. This gap here is 12 and a half. There's a little step down for the stair, but I'm hoping that it will still sit here. I could also put it in like the passenger seat, but if I have an actual passenger, it would be a pain to move it back and forth. So I'm hoping it will just sit here. Um, it will cut down on my floor space when the bed's pulled out, but I should still have a small section. So I'm hoping that will work together. Obviously I'll show you uh, I will show you in a future video how that's going to all come together. I'm going to install a little 12 volt outlet over here to plug this into, but that is specifically the refrigerator I'm looking at right now. And since I'm showing it to you now, uh, I will put a link to that in the description to this video as well. Finally, I just wanted to show you these two drawings to show you how much of a process this is. Obviously when I was discovering a mistake that I made a few seconds ago, um, I, you, you saw that this is an ongoing process and these illustrations show that this is my very first drawing. Um, this was just showing what the storage space was gonna be. This is where the fridge, this was gonna be the only open area. The rest of this was gonna be all built in cabinets. Um, so not only has the design changed, but so has my technology. I am now using drafting software versus this was actually a spreadsheet software. This was Apple's Numbers, which is the Apple version of Microsoft Excel and, or Apple's answer to Microsoft Excel rather. Um, these are cells. Each of these squares is actually a cell. I just did it so that they represented six inches each, but that meant I couldn't get specific, like seven and a quarter inches. I couldn't represent that here. It was all estimates. So uh, this really is a huge process. If you're doing this on your own, don't be discouraged when you're constantly redoing things, when you're constantly adjusting things, because that is part of the process. Uh, you have to think about it as part of the adventure, part of the fun. It does get to be a pain when you're constantly redrawing things, but uh, I'm just keep thinking about the outcome, where I'm gonna land, and it's a very exciting prospect. So it has been a process already, and I'm only about six weeks in, so, you know, we'll see where I am in another six weeks. I'm hoping the conversion will be done in another six weeks. I don't know if that's possible, but um, just I've made huge strides already, and I'm just very proud of that. I'm very excited. So thank you for watching. Um, please share your thoughts and ideas in the comments. I love to hear what you think. I love to see what you're doing. I have started subscribing to um, people who are watching my videos commenting because I see that tons of other people are doing their own builds and I really love that and I really want to see what you're doing. So please do that. If you like what you see, like the video, share it, uh, and please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.